Kano map is a method that's used to simplify a much larger Boolean expression. It does so not by applying Boolean identities or laws that we've seen already with Boolean algebra simplification. Instead, it uses this thing called a Kano map or K-map to plug in the combination of inputs from a truth table that produced a one as the output. So a few terms, a variable is any of the letters. They're arbitrary, doesn't really matter what they are. They're normally written in capitals, A, B, C, etc. A term is a group of these um, variables. And a term is, think of it like the combination of inputs for one row in a truth table that produces a one as the output. Now, these three actually are in order, one, two, three, of how we work with the Carnot map. We produce from a truth table the sum of products. We then put the sum of products into our Carnot map in order to produce what we call the optimal sum of products. And from there, we can create the simplified sum of products as our, as our answer. Now, it's important to note here that the simplified sum of products is not the same as the absolute simplified Boolean expression. What we can produce in Boolean algebra might actually be different to what's produced from the Carnot map, but that's okay. They're not trying to achieve exactly the same thing. You'd use a Carnot map in real life when you've got a really complex circuit. We might be talking hundreds of gates, hundreds of inputs, um, too big for us to show on paper, of course, which is why our Carnot maps usually have three or four inputs. But instead of starting with a massive Boolean expression and trying to ap apply Boolean laws to it, it can actually sometimes be a bit easier to pro use a Carnot map, produce the simplified sum of products, and then from there apply the Boolean algebra. Now, gray code is what we'll see in the Carnot map itself. So here's a simple but fairly typical uh, Carnot map question. We get given a truth table. As I said, for A2, we tend to be given a three or four input truth table. In theory, we could probably be given up to a five input truth table, but by then we've sort of exhausted how much space we've got on A4 sheet of paper. Part one is we're asked to apply the sum of products. So if I just go over here, the sum of products, that equates to the combination of inputs that have produced a one as the output in the truth table. Any combinations of input that produced a zero, well, we just ignore. So the sum of products, we take one of these four rows at a time, and we just describe it in Boolean algebra. So A, B, C, zero, one, one, not A, and B, and C. Whether you put the dots for and or leave them out doesn't actually matter. Then we go on to the next one. So that's separated. Each term, this is a term, is separated by the OR operator. We could have A, not B, C. OR, the next one, A, B, not C. And finally, this last row, A, B, C. There are four terms four rows in our truth table that have produced one as the output. Now we get to the Carnot map itself. We need to take those sum of products and put them into the Carnot map. Along the top here, you can see I've got binary values for A and B. This is known as gray code. Now, gray code, yes, it's binary. The one, the value on the left corresponds to the left-hand variable, so A in this case, and the value on the right corresponds to B. You can see over here for C, it's still gray code, but um, we've only got one input, and we know in binary that's going to be one of two states, 0 or 1. Now, if we go back to the truth table, our combinations of input in binary is effectively counting. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. If we look at the patterns of binary A, B, C. But in gray code, what's really happening is one bit and only one bit changes in each column. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 
just like a truth table. But now we need to change this bit that it hasn't changed yet into a one. And then to get the fourth possible combination with two bits, we just change one bit there. Now that's really important. Sometimes you're given a, a, true, a Kano map like this that's partially filled in, and other times the gray code is blank. So you have to put the gray code columns or rows, if there were two inputs in the rows, in the exact same pattern as we have here. Otherwise it's wrong. Now part, uh, part two is complete the Kano map. So what I do is I go back for each of these terms, not A, B, C, or 0, 1, 1. So A, B, 0, 1, C, 1, so 0, 1, 1, and I put a 1 in the Kano map. A, not B, C, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Uh, A, B, not C, 1, 1, 0. And then finally, Stacey, uh, A, B, C. Why did I not remember that? Now at this point, my Kano map is still not complete until I fill in the remaining empty squares with zeros. Now we come to part three, which is we need to create an optimal sum of products. Might help if I change the highlighter for that. Now, we draw one or more loops around appropriate groups of ones. A couple of things to note here. The number of loops that we create is known to us by the number of marks available for the task. One loop, one mark. Appropriate groups of ones, well, the, how many ones we have in a loop has to be a number that's a power of two. Now occasionally, in the rear example, that's a one. I'll come back to that at a later point in class. However, it's more commonly on paper going to be either two ones, four ones, uh, maybe in a larger Kono map, maybe up to eight, but no more than that really for our purposes. So therefore, the three along the bottom, I can't circle because that's not a power of two. The other thing to note is I want to get as many ones as possible, the maximum number of ones as I possibly can inside each loop. That's the optimization part of it. So if I change color here, let's say I've got two ones there, I've got two here, and I've got two here. Now having this bottom center one in multiple loops is absolutely fine. No problem with that at all. Then finally, we generate the simplified sum of products, which is actually what we're trying to generate in the Kano map. What we're doing is we're looking at the combinations of inputs, ones and zeros, um, to produce fewer terms than what we started with. So if I put this out in full, here's our two vertical ones, and I've got A, B, C. So these two here. A is the same, no matter which cell we're in. B is the same, no matter which cell we're in. So we want to keep A and B. But C changes. In the top row, C is 0, and the bottom row, C is 1. So in other words, we can get rid of that variable. So the first sum of product is, or the first product is AB. Then we get to the next one. If we do the left-hand group of ones, ABC, I can see that A is 0 and 1, so let's get rid of that. It changed. B is 1 each time, so I want to keep B. And C is the same because both ones are on the same row, so BC. And then finally, the right-hand two, if I put this out in full again, um, I can see that A is 1. I want to keep that. B this time changes, so let's get rid of that. And C is the same. They're on the same row, B, C. Sorry, A, C. Now, I can tell by looking at the answer here, that's fine for the Carnot map. I leave it there. 
Each term is worth a mark, so I can see that over there. But I can tell by looking at it that, in theory, I could take this Boolean expression, apply some Boolean identities to it, and get a much shorter expression. But as I said, the purpose of the Carnot map is to produce a simplified sum of products, which isn't necessarily the same as the most simplified Boolean expression there possibly is. 